body. She's still, she's still gonna have that fat man girl mentality. You see what I'm saying? So people never change who they are because the circumstances change. You are who the fuck you are. You see what I'm saying? So if you was a super lame, right, and you start getting women, whatever, whatever power you attain, it just enhances who you already are. So it don't matter if you take everything away from me. I'm gonna get it all back. You know what? That shit didn't make me. It only fit me. You know what I'm saying? It only fit my mind. It's like okay, yeah. I take that. I, I won't take that. That's like how I think. How that's the frequency that I'm living. That's what I'm gonna get. That's my program. So. No one can ever call me a layman and see what I'm doing and be like, yo, you a lame. Never, nigga. My mom would never, I can never be a lame, nigga. You can take everything from me and throw it back. Because that's why I walked away from Mexico the way I did, because I knew I was going to get, I'm going to get it right back. You give me money, I'm going to give it away. That's how I am. I'm going to share it. I don't need a lot of money. For what? I just need what I need. I'll give the rest away. I need my bare minimums. As long as I got my bitches, my woman, I got my woman. Somebody, you know, sometimes, you know, you say, I need my food. As long as I got my food, my woman, some lovely people around me that can understand my mind and grasp my mind, my music, studio, whatever. I got, that's the minimum. I just, as long as I got nature, I got fruit, I got trees, I got, I got, Mexico, then when I got locked up, they would have sent me 
fired a warrant in Mexico, right? Dumbass. It's called the Interpol. The Interpol, if you have anything in Mexico that you're running from, that's what they would have did. They would have sent me to Mexico, nigga. Mexico would have came and got me, nigga. Fuck, nigga. Oh. 
hot suggestions for you after the motherfucker. Yeah, that's so, that's kind of tall, like. But I, I'll see. I, it depends on how pretty she is and what her chart look like. But that is kind of tall for me, though. So, yo, Denise, where she at, baby? Don't do it, Denise. Bitch, just stupid ass. So, it's gonna find your cock block. What the fuck? Yo, the internet let people do whatever.
social media serious, but you put your energy on it, that means you don't take you serious. I don't give a fuck what I'm putting my energy into. yourself somewhere and not value yourself because you do not value yourself that's why it's not that serious to you Why not? Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Run it back. 
he got the tattoo, and it was a massive pay-per-view. And I have respect for Tyron, and it was a good fight, so I think they're still going to answer questions. Uh, there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to ask. I do want to let everyone know that, of course, we are presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. we got to show some love. They are the official sports betting partner of the highly anticipated Jake Paul versus Tyron Woodley 2 fight. And how about this promotion, guys? They're asking people to bet $1. If you bet $1 on either one of you landing a punch, a single punch in this eight-round fight, you can win $100. How about that? That's a tremendous promotion. This is and giving if, away 100 bucks. Huh? Just like that. One punch. That's all that has to happen. And if you're not living in a sports book state, you can join the Paul versus Woodley 2 pool and win up to $25,000. All you have to do when you sign up, use the code GLOVES, and they will hook you up. Shout out to the good folks over at DraftKings Sportsbook. By the way, he mentioned the tattoo. Can we have visual evidence of it? Where's it at? What's left, man? Oh, no. Wait, it's show it to the camera. It's, it's fading away like... What kind of, can you show like it to the camera? What, what kind of tattoo? You're the first person to ask to see it, and I showed it to everybody else. I did like that too, but I felt weird doing it. Is that a legit tattoo? Just I for don't the record, know. it doesn't look. It doesn't look is like. That it. A henna? Is that henna? Is it? Do you henna it every? No, I, I, it's a real tattoo. But I was trying to troll the troll because one, I didn't think I lost a fight. Two, it wasn't the first choice in my life to put. I love this dude on my hand. So I'm like, how can I troll to flip this coin? Put the I love you on the finger that means opposite of love. And this shit's gonna wear off. So probably in another couple months, this will never took place. How do you feel about that? It is what it is, you know. He had it at one point, so I guess it counts. And that's all that really matters, I guess. He still had I love Jake Paul tattooed on him. That was a bet, though. It's a, he, you know, he took the bet, and he's a man of his word, so I respect that. Can you describe, like, you're actually staring at Tyron Woodley again. Uh, we're in a different locale. We're not in your hometown of Cleveland. But you have to climb this mountain. You climbed it literally three and a half months ago. And now you have to do this it's over a big again. mountain. Yeah. He's got big cheeks. <laughs> what is it like actually doing this again mentally for you? <laughs> doing him again. Uh, <laughs> this. I said this. <laughs> this whole thing. <laughs> it, it, it's <laughs> exciting. <laughs> it's exciting to get another grab of those cheeks. And I, I just, I'm excited to be here in Florida. You know? <laughs> Sun's out, fun's out. <laughs> Why? You had the line also at the press conference today. Why? Why are you focusing on that part of the anatomy? It's just funny. That okay. part of the anatomy? Yeah, just, I mean, uh, it's just funny to me because everyone tries to be so tough in this sport, and I'm just, I don't give a fuck, so, you know. And I know better than the comment because we're in the cancel culture right now. Anything I say, any little like, gentle rebuttal back, so unfortunately, I just got to let him go ahead and say it. Shit. What's it like for you to be staring at him again? You did this already. You did this dance, and now you're looking at him again. You know what? I think the first time around, you know, I didn't know a lot about Jake in, a, in the ring. Nobody did because he didn't, he didn't have a lot of rounds. So sparring is one thing. Fighting is another thing. He fought in most two rounds before then. So I went in there, and I had to be ready for everything. Um, it's one thing to break down a fight of what he would do against a similar style wrestler as me. We didn't have that. One, he never fought a similar style wrestling. Me. Two, there was no footage on it. There was no real sparring. There was no real shadow boxing. I didn't have shit to really bank it off of. Now I got eight rounds of me fighting him. So I can look at what I did well. I can look at what he did well. You know what I mean? Both guys got punched. Both guys fought the eight rounds. So now it's time to really expound upon that. And a lot of people are making like, oh, this is a last minute fight. Oh, you would just check. No, it's not a last minute fight. It's last minute for y'all. This last minute for you guys, like when the fight ended and I got back into training, I was working on the things I could have did differently. I was working on things that not only for the fight against Jake, anybody I box, I needed to tighten some shit up. And I started doing that. And I was sparring, I was conditioned, I was running. So when they asked me, you know, they couldn't even really finish the statement before I was in. What is this? What is that? Uh, this is the most valuable boxer belt given to me by the CEO of most valuable promotions. I think it speaks for itself. So this was gifted to you. You had nothing to do with this. No, I, I, I mean the CEO of Most Valuable Promotions gave it to me. Ain't that, that you? That's me. Oh, you, okay. Yeah. I was like, I was you you referring to, to the Kisa. No, I gave, I gave it to myself. Okay. So you designed it. Can you uh, tell us Alec, the so Alec Monopoly. He's uh, basically the only way to describe him is he's our generation's Picasso. Okay. He designed and painted it. 
Uh, one of his paintings sells for $200,000, $250,000. Um, and it has the Hermes uh, Birkin bag sewn into the side here. Wow. Uh, most valuable boxer, 4J Paul. And then Diamond Rolex, uh, wow. Diamond, Diamond Cartier as well. You leaving them watches in there? Yeah, leaving them in there. And this, this is one of many. We, we want to, most valuable promotions, we want to give these belts to the people who we think are the most valuable. So, and, and make a statement. You know, the general public doesn't know the difference between the WBC, the IBF, the WBO belts. This is something that they can universally recognize as who has the most valuable belt. Is this on the line? No, I mean, this one. This one's for me, you know? This, one, this is like, something that I earned. This is something that I earned, not for what I'm doing, just doing in the ring. It's outside of the ring as well. For the sport as a whole, the audience that I'm bringing, my foundation, what I'm doing for fighter pay, all of it, uh, is what makes me one of the most valuable boxers. Do you want this if you win? No, I'm good. Why? Shit, this same for Jake Paul. You know, I already got this new damn name on my finger. <laughs> you know, I mean, I they could just walk around with a belt with his name on it. No, I mean, whatever it takes for him to come out there his best, because that's the that's the Jake I want. I want the one that's his best. You know what I mean? One thing I can tell you is I'm never gonna I'm never gonna throw bullshit out there. I looked at his face, he want to fight. He ready to fight, and I like that. And I'm ready to fight. So, can, can we, we see? Can we see your eyes? Oh, yeah, you want to see them?